thing I will say is that, you know, been, I've been at IDC for about oh, probably 15 years or so, and ever since the birth of cloud, I've noticed that there seems to be a bit of a sport in the industry, and even amongst IDC analysts, in taking great delight in pointing out just how deep the trouble that telcos are in is when they think of telcos in the cloud market. So, you know, it's very easy to find articles, it's very easy to find people to talk about how cloud is going to destroy the telco models, how they're in such trouble, they're going to collapse and just become bit providers and all of that. Well, I think, you know, uh, in reality, you know, the, the reality is a little more nuanced than that. But it's certainly true that the telco landscape is a very turbulent one. Um, so we have the telco in the middle here. This is a um, this is a standard way that we present the telco market because we do a lot of work for suppliers to the telcos and the telcos and the customers and so on. So we have the telco in the middle, uh, the end users, the customers over there in green, and the, the suppliers to the telcos, the vendor partners on the right here. Now you know each of these has, as we all know, you know a lot of you know, macro and micro level disruptive trends taking place. So in the end user world, in the CIO world, you know, you've got the shift to OTT services, so breaking out of the telco lock-in, you know, I don't have to buy my communications from one provider, I can go to a number of different cloud-based comms providers, I can shift my IT to the cloud, IoT and analytics, you know, a lot of that is new workloads coming on stream. Um, the vendors have their own sets of issues and trends, and of course the telcos have their own as well. So it's a, it's a difficult business to be in as a telco, and each one of these is a major topic in its own right, and we have reports and do consulting analyses on each of these, on each of these individual trends. But to take uh, just cloud by itself, and to take even just a, a small, well, a relatively small part of the overall cloud market, just public cloud, and look at where telcos are in that part of the market, well, you know, Telcos sometimes look a little schizophrenic. You know, we've seen uh, uh, 10 years ago, is it, is it 10 years ago? Almost 10, 10 years ago. Telcos leap into the cloud market and begin building platforms and infrastructures and going, you know, very much going to the market as cloud providers in their own right. Wow, if Amazon can do it, we can do it because we're in country, we own the customer base, we have the relationships, we've got the brand, and we've got our own sovereign data centers and so on. Now, wasn't quite that simple, of course. So we're seeing now a bifurcation, nice word, kind of a slightly uh, uh, polarized approach that telcos are taking to public cloud. Um, so on the one hand, we have companies like Verizon, very and at and Coles, and some others in Europe, who essentially say, as pretty much every single telco has said to us over the last few years, these almost exact words, we don't want to be with Amazon. And that's what they're saying. We don't want to compete with Amazon. We don't want to be a public cloud provider. So we're going to move our customers off our public cloud multi-tenant infrastructure as a service platform onto our partners. And we're going to migrate them onto our onto a private cloud platform or whatever. Now that's a great strategy because telcos don't want to compete with Amazon. But at the other end of the scale, over here, we have companies that are doing the exact opposite. Well, simplistically, it kind of looks like the exact opposite. So Telefonica with the recently launched, or not quite launched yet, Open Cloud, uh, OpenStack, built with Huawei, public cloud platform. Deutsche Telekom just uh, recently announced uh, Open Telecom Cloud, again, OpenStack based public cloud platform, Huawei, etc. Uh, NTT uh, has uh, entered the European market for a multi tenant public cloud platform by adding OpenStack onto its enterprise cloud portfolio. Um, so, on the face of it, this looks like a totally opposite strategy. Uh, what they have in common, of course, you know, is that public cloud <coughs> isn't the be-all and end-all for telcos, whether they're in the market or not in the market. What they're really focused on is selling more complex solutions, selling hybrid cloud, multi-cloud platforms, and I'm glad Andres said that word because this is a very, this is a huge theme in the telco world, and it's something that, you know, if you're a supplier to telcos, you should be talking about. Cloud connectivity. So um, areas which are very much network centric. Okay, so we saw telcos going through a, you know, going head to head with Amazon and other cloud providers, trying to be pure play cloud providers, and we're really seeing now a lot of them coming back to the network and saying, how does the network influence our cloud strategy? 
And uh, we think that you know, customers are getting this as well. The role of the network in the cloud. I like when I said I didn't have any figures. So some figures. <laughs> These are my only figures. So we've done uh, another survey. Carla mentioned our survey called Cloud View, which is new. We've just finished that and we'll be publishing reports very soon. Uh, we've run another survey in the research group I work in, which is the Telecoms and Networking Research Group, and that survey is called the Enterprise Communications Survey. Some of you may know it. In the past, it was called the WAN Manager Survey. So, so it's a network-centric survey. But we asked some cloud-related questions, and this is one that I quite like. We asked companies, what is holding you back, not from just using the cloud or what's an inhibitor, but what's holding you back from going from where you are now to making more strategic use of cloud or fuller use of cloud. So adding more critical workloads into your cloud environment. And we gave them four, uh, well we gave them a load of options and said choose four, which, which, which are the top four that are really holding you back? And these results here show just the proportion of companies that set each of these things as their number one item. Uh, so that's why the figures are relatively like 18, 17 percent. They they had three others to choose from, so you know, the overall responses were distributed. And the thing that left out for me was that okay, security is up there as it as it always is, but um, the network. So network or issues to do with the network, not having enough network or not having a flexible enough network, is on a par with security in terms of holding companies back. Um, if we go through these, there's, you know, oh, I'm just going here, general quality or reliability of the internet. Um, all of these numbers have been increasing in our surveys year over year, <coughs> well, which is part of the reason why I say companies are sort of getting the message that network is really important for cloud. We're seeing all of these increasing importance over time. Companies are putting more critical workloads in to kind of use the network to operate better. There's some support for end-to-end -end management between users and cloud. Um, and uh, so that kind of talks to the multi-cloud idea. The issue at the bottom is you know, this perception the companies may have that there's a lack of private network offerings to cloud services. Uh, so maybe companies think that there isn't a way that they can run a private network to their cloud service uh, is actually the least important issue. So that makes us think that you know companies understand, first of all, that the network's important, clearly it is, but that there are offerings in the market uh, that can help them to connect to their cloud services over their network securely. And another lie, I do have one more figure. <laughs> I'm not going to go on and on like this. Um, that's backed up by the other question we asked them, which was a simple, we presented them with a range of issues and said, how much do you agree with these in relation to cloud? One of them that I liked was this item here. We need a hybrid or a multi-cloud solution. So not quite the same as um, you know, we are using hybrid cloud, but we need a multi-cloud solution or a hybrid cloud. Do you agree or disagree with that? And very, very few companies actively disagree with that, which is good news. Um, Good numbers strongly agree, but you know it's in the middle here. So a lot of companies are pretty neutral, kind of haven't decided. I mean that's what you'd expect at this stage, I guess. But the biggest response is from companies that agree they do need, they do need a, a multi-cloud, uh, uh, you know, some kind of multi-cloud capability to integrate and orchestrate their various cloud resources. And before I finish off, uh, I just stole this slide wholesale from our uh, world head of worldwide research, Frank Jennings who some of you may be familiar with. He gave a presentation at IDC's Directions Conference in the US recently, uh, very well attended, and he gave a great presentation, which is all about looking at the role of cloud in digital transformation and the need for scale. Um, and he went through, and I, and I do recommend that you go to the IDC website and download it, you know, have access to it and, and watch it. It's, 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 it's a great presentation. His issue was all scale, scale of adoption, so third platform technologies, you know, the IoT, uh, cloud, social mobility, etc. Uh, DX, so the number of companies that are using these technologies, these platforms are working up enormously. The technologies, which are, uh, you know, once you have the platform in place, the technologies you can apply on top of those to do the really exciting things like uh, AI, 
uh, IoT applications, uh, as I <coughs> spoke about, is increasing in scale by orders of magnitude. And then the ecosystems, uh, so uh, developers, uh, you know, developer-centric ecosystems and so on, all of these are increasing by, by two, three orders of magnitude. But the thing that strikes me is that all of these are great areas for telcos to be in. So the network, and by extension telcos, are at the heart of this enormous ramp up in scale. Um, and so there's, there's a clear opportunity to um, help them get there. So I'll come on to that in a second. So just to finish off, uh, the three recommendations I have for telcos, first of all, are to um, you know, think of cloud not as a product or as a market, but to think of it, you know, first and foremost in terms of the ecosystem. What is your role as a telco in other people's ecosystems? What ecosystems can you put together? And how can you facilitate customers extending across those ecosystems? The suppliers to the telcos, which I guess is a lot of people here in the audience, um, one thing that we hear a lot is that telcos don't just want to be sold products, but they need a lot of help. They want help, but they need a lot of help to get into these new areas. They don't understand that there's a lot of internal conflict and so on. And for telco customers, so, so, so enterprises don't see telcos as either or. I go to a telco as a cloud provider, or I go to Amazon. Um, think of telcos as, you know, as being facilitators, enablers, as opposed to end primary des cloud destinations in their own right. Okay, so with that, uh, thank you, and I'd like to hand over to you.